The Society of Decorative Painters is an international not-for-profit organization dedicated to promoting the art of decorative painting. The certification program provides an opportunity for members to submit their work to be judged for certification. There are two levels of certification, the Certified Decorative Artist CDA and the Master Decorative Artist MDA. It is extremely important that each applicant understand the work submitted must be entirely his or her own. In preparing and working on the entry, the applicant may not seek assistance or critique from anyone including teachers, art students, or friends. Each year a new design is provided for the applicants. There is one opportunity each year to present work to be judged. This is just prior to the annual meeting and conference which is held in the spring of each year. Entries are carefully judged and receive a critique. Hi, I'm Diane Crowther, MDA. This is Susan Abdella, Hi. MDA, and this is Sue Pruitt, MDA. At the beginning of judging, a team comes in and they are called the Standards Committee. And the two gals that are on the Standards Committee will go through every single board applicant and take it to a photograph book where we have all the 75s, 60s, 65s, 50s, 55s from 1985. They will go through all the boards and find the boards that most closely match a 55 standard, a 65 standard, and a 75 standard. And those are used to judge the current year's boards against. So at this time, after we've written the critique and taken all the um, notes that we need to do, we would take this board up to the standard, which will be on the easel in the middle of the room, and we compare. Is this closer to a 55? Is it closer to a 65? Is it closer to a 75? Or does it fall somewhere in the middle? And so at this time, this board was taken up. It fell right in between a 65 and a 55. So the score on this is going to be a 60. It is imperative that we do these standards each year to keep level of difficulty from growing. We match the standards for the year that we're judging closely with the photographs that we've taken since 1985. And there are three huge books that are probably four to six inches thick of photos, so we have a lot to choose from. This year's standards uh, committee spent hours going through all the photos and pulling them all out of the book and laying them all out and making sure that the standards were pretty dead on to the standards from 1985 and the years past. So this is the part you would not see, but that's how we arrive at the score to begin with. So Sue will mark down a 60 right. on this. Because we know that's what the score is. Because we know that's what the score is. And we stick it to the board. And we take the critique and the map. Put them together. And then take them up to the certification uh, chair. And then read the critiques to make sure what was written on the critique and what is on the board match. And then they are put in a pile. So this would go in this pile of 60s, this pile of 65s, pile of 70s. And then at the end of judging of this category, we take all of the boards out and we lay all the 55s on the table. And every judge looks at every board. They don't look at it for as long, but they go along and look at it. And if and, they feel... Yeah, and read the critiques. And read the yes. critiques. critiques mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Thank you. And if they feel that this is a better than a 60, they will push it up. If they feel it is lower than a 60, they would have pulled it down. And then after all the push-pull is done for one number category, then we vote. Does every, we talk to the judges who judged it and spend an hour to an hour and a half with it and they give their reasons why they judged it and did what they did with it and 
then the team that pushed or the judge that pushed or pulled it will stand up and give her reasons why she pushed it up or pulled it down. And then we have a group discussion about it and then we vote and the majority wins. I feel that that push-pull is an extremely fair way to do it. Definitely. Because it also gives all of the judges in the room an opportunity to see all the boards and read the critiques and have their opinion on Absolutely. if they think that it you know, deserves a higher score. And we, we do give, you know, try to do that as much as possible. We, we do not want to give low scores. That's not our goal no. to give low no. scores. It's to encourage and help the program to grow. You know, it's not infrequently that a board will be, say, a 60, and then will go up to 65, and then that particular board will be judged in the 65 category again. Right. And so then it can go through the same process. So we try to point out where your mistakes were made and not focus in as much on where you didn't make a mistake because if you didn't make a mistake you've got it right Run right with it <laughs> I think it's hard for the applicant to after they worked so hard on this to get the critique back and um, maybe they're not looking at some of the good things that we said but they're only looking at the negative and they take that negative in and um, yes yes may, maybe not want to ever do this again because they don't want to hear anything negative but our goal is always to help you grow and you know, very often when you do get a non-passing critique, there's always disappointment, always. So if you can allow a little bit of time to bypass that and then read your critique again, and perhaps you'll see it in a light that we have meant it to be as a, a, something that will help you grow and learn and become a better painter. I want to talk about the portfolio that you received in the mail. In your portfolio, you have three pages that are very important. The instruction to the applicants, please read it and note it. You also have the certification program information, which gives you tons of information about the program. And on the back of this, you have an actual critique form that you can follow to make sure that your entry matches what we will be judging. So in the packet, you will have your mailback judging fee. It is very important that you fill this out. You include your check or checks or a check with multiple numbers on it. If uh, you are in the MDA program, you are allowed to enter all three, just one or two. So you have to pay the judging fee for the number of boards that you are entering. At the CDA level, you're only allowed to enter one, which will be your choice of stroke or still life. So you want to be sure you get this in. There's also a mailback fee paper that you do want to fill out. This is very important, and this can also go with this. This tells you how much money you have to spend to have us mail back your boards and if you want them insured. So be sure and read this carefully and send these two pieces together to Kansas who are going to be at the convention. You can also pick up your board and take it home with you and, and avoid the mail back fees. The last and most important thing that you must do, this is your certification warranty. You fill this out and you circle or check which area you're entering in. If you are submitting your test for CDA, it will be either CDA Still Life or CDA Stroke. If you are entering in the MDA program, you can do one, two, or all three. This is a very, very important piece of paper. At the MDA level, if you are doing all three, photocopy this two more times and be sure and include this with each entry that you have. You will receive an envelope, so you fold this em this entry after, after filling it out, put it into the envelope. The envelope will have the address of the person that you'll be sending it to. Tape it onto your board this way. This girl has already done this, and it's on your 
return thing, it will ask you for your number, and it'll say C, and then your number that it has your little re that you get your little receipt from the office, and then your return address only. It doesn't give your name. So this is how we receive your board. Another thing that's in your portfolio is information on who to contact if you have any questions. Got her phone number, her email address. Um, these entries for certification are such a benefit, such a help to anyone who wants to um, improve their painting skills. Please understand this is for your own personal growth and it is the best way to learn. One of the things that I enjoyed most about the program is I learned so much and it was a good way to um, know where I was lacking and when we're writing these critiques it's not something that we're you know, trying to beat you up over. It's, we're actually trying to help you. And we hope that you will be ever prudent and ever faithful in your journey to achieve your MDA or CDA or just excellence in your painting. Absolutely. Good luck to you. Good luck. Good luck.